Greetings and salutations. It is I, your favorite narrator from Ohio, Brian Vaughn VA. How's everybody doing? Today, I've got another story for you that I think y'all are going to love. A Curse of Strahd ending I won't soon forget. So, there's going to be Curse of Strahd spoilers, as if you haven't already heard the campaign end to end already. Hello, Mr. Ripper subreddit. I just started D&D 5th edition a year ago during this lovely pandemic. Oh, I love the sarcasm. I would also like to give thanks to the wonderful voice actors, staff, and community who run everything behind the scenes. Aw, thank you very much. I love you with all my heart, and I hope that you're doing okay during this quarantine. You all bring these wonderful stories to life, and I definitely would not be as engrossed in D&D now if not for you all. A brief warning for the faint of heart. This character was first created with Point Buy and Roll20's Character Mancer. I no longer use the Roll20 system as it is hugely flawed, and I make much better characters today. This story is from my first campaign, Curse of Strahd, and this character was my first to make it to the end of a campaign. Now first, his backstory. Gildor Ledbloom, a half-elf ranger with a pirate background. Raised aboard the Floodwind, the captain, the crew, and of course his parents taught the young man well. Nature and medicine from the women of the crew, as well as combat and expertise with weapons from the men. His human mother gifted him her own dagger to protect himself in battle, and his elven noble father taught him to utilize his quick wit and dexterity. Thersia Ironquill, his mother, told him stories of her life. Specifically, how a dashing elven noble, despite the responsibilities and riches he had, threw it all away for a human rogue like her. The captain of the vessel would take Gildor under his wing and promise the boy that he would one day have the sea. His pirate beginnings would end cruelly as his parents were killed by an enemy ship as they sunk the floodwind. Gildor, being the only survivor, managed to wake up on shore and began to explore the world and hoped to be strong enough to take revenge. He became a ranger in the Reaching Woods and Sunset Mountains, hopefully to train and become strong like his ex-pirate crew. Seeing no results, he resided to become an adventurer and seek out a quest that would become legendary. Now the lead-up. Gildor ran into a couple of folks in a tavern, took them by his side, and the start of Strahd began. However, while in the famous death house, one of us falls into a spike pit and collapses. The others and I die, failing death saves in another part of the mini dungeon, but our DM rules that we can take a trait and live again, or die and make a new character. Gildor, the nature-bearing ranger, lived on, but could no longer handle animals well. His party would continue, beat the death house, and come across Velaki, Irina Koliana, in the party at this point. They find the Blue Water Inn and stay there for the night. My DM at the time ruled that if the player is not present, the party member isn't. So while I'm absent for one week's session, my party is heading towards a winery when they are attacked in a random encounter and, uh, TPK'd. I'll start off by saying that Gildor was not well made and with really poor AC, very few arrows left for his bow, he was simply petrified by fear. So, with barely anything to defend himself and no word from his other party members, Gildor did not journey out of the city for weeks. Irina would visit the church every now and then, but she worried for the half-elf. Gildor was not confident enough to see if he could join, let alone lead another team. One day, another group had made their way into Velaki, a half-fork barbarian named Deathkiller, a tall war-forged paladin named Bon Decimus a frog samurai fighter named Kotaji Chaimoto, and a Simic hybrid blood hunter named Trafir Chaimoto. Though the Chaimoto name was just of the clan, Trafir's player considered the two of them brothers. Gildor was not prepared, but accepted the help to protect Irina. After releasing vampires on Velaki and losing Irina in what can only be described as a nuclear explosion thanks to Bon and Deathkiller, two great stories for another time, Gildor lost nearly all hope of escape and Strahd sent his vampire assassins to kill the party. Every day, we would have to battle one of them. However, one day when the party got to the Abbey of St. Markova, another player would come into the play. Archangel Angelica, an ASMR life cleric sent from the heavens to kill Strahd, after being the one to release him from the afterlife in our canon. 
Gildor had some hope, but still kept distance out of fear of losing another one close to him. Gildor began to get to know the party. Bon, a true folk hero, wanting to smite all evil. Deathkiller's true name was Lindsay Wimund and was ashamed of her human nature. Hence the name change. Trafir was distant so his true nature was never truly clear, but Kodiji wanted power above all else. The Amber Temple came and went as Kodiji seemed to have touched nearly every single sarcophagi after the party described one to each person. Gildor's gift was three castings of raised dead and the catch was that I gained the flaw of you expect payment in return of every favor. Bond found a shield guardian, an important detail, and killed a man for it. So after the temple, we got an invitation to a wedding between Strahd and Irina. The letter also stated that the party would no longer be hunted by the undead assassins. Gildor was confused but stayed headstrong, glad they would no longer waste resources to fight every day. Perhaps he was hoping to convince her out of it if mind controlled, or steal her back if she was trapped. Now it's time for the real meat of the story. It was on to Strahd for our party. We hadn't found the Sun Sword yet, so the only logical step was Castle Ravenloft. After Angelica banished a rock to another plane, she earned the respect and admiration to become Gildor's second in command. Level 11 was how we went into the castle and how my DM balanced milestones and encounters. We decided to scour the inside for a bit, even killing Strahd's right hand man. With still no sign of the Sun Sword and with many feet of rope, Lindsay decided to climb the castle walls from the outside, listening to a vision of the sword above a fireplace. She had found the sword, returning to the party covered in burn marks and ash. We were now level 12. Preparing to fight him at any point, our party was ready to face the vampire alone while at his wedding. A bit past midnight, our party finds the chapel and there's no wedding. We hear a party going on in the room nearby and decide that's where he is. Up in arms, we are greeted by Strahd and his Hythonia wife, Irina. Gildor asks to speak with Irina alone and the party joins him. He asks her if she's okay with her current position and if the old her is truly gone. Her answer is yes. After a remove curse check, nothing happened. She heads into the other room as Gildor gives a speech to his party about ending Strahd for good, freeing Barovia, and if he must kill Irina, then he will do so out of duty. Strahd tries to offer the frog samurai a position of power if Kotiji turns on the party, and he refuses. We return to the reception room, and the guests aren't leaving. They begin to draw their weapons and cast spells. The party is separated between different entrances to the hall and Gildor's side. Trafir, Lindsay, and Esmeralda is accosted with the spell Confusion, while the other side is given Slow. Not only that, but on the other side of the party was Angelica, Kodiji, and Bon. Bon Decimus just fused himself with the Shield Guardian to boost his AC, attack bonus, and HP. DM begins Strahd's turn with, Bon, how's that armor I gave you? The Shield Guardian was in his control, and Bon, a nine-foot metal behemoth, was now struggling to control his own body. Angelica would take a brutal hit from the Mace of Disruption Bond held with many modifiers for both damage and attack. Two high-level sorcerers, a rogue and a ranger, would take us down to low HP quickly as we had to fight off Irina's new form. Turns out the DM made this final encounter from the dead characters of his last party that died in the castle. They had failed at level 11. The party was truly in despair after Trafir was instantly turned to stone by a crit failsafe on Irina's petrifying gaze. Gildor couldn't see himself winning as his familiar Squawky the Parrot had also passed. But somewhere along the way, we turned the tide. Lindsay's death defiance kept her up for the most of the fight and Angelica's healing kept Bon laying into Strahd with his mace, with Kotaji slicing into the undead enemy guests. We managed to break out of the corner entrances of the room, killing the extra sorcerers and rangers with devastating ferocity. Strahd grew desperate, disappearing into his castle walls as Bon diffused the magic armor and began to strike him well. Irina, in her Hythonia form, was our biggest trouble, but the party managed to kill her too, eventually. All that was left was the vampire lord himself. 
Gildor had activated the holy symbol of Ravenkind early in the fight, and the room was small enough that Strahd would have to come out in order to kill one of us. Gildor prepared a lightning arrow spell, and after Strahd peeked from the shadows, swiping out at Angelica, Gildor struck true. The lightning enveloped the vampire's body, and with a devastating blow from Lindsay as she plunged the sun sword into Strahd, the vampire disintegrated. Along with Strahd and the Hythonia, this encounter was definitely ranked deadly when our DM calculated it, and he thought the session would be quick. It went for a solid 8 hours when our usual session length is 3. He respected us though, and said he was surprised we survived. Gildor now owns a ship sailing with Bond to fight evil and take home some gold. Angelica returned to the sky, regaining her status as an archangel. Bond visits every now and then. Lindsay ended up staying, guilt-ridden of what the party had done to a now in ruin Valaki and Barovia, repurposing the death house and putting the statue of Trafir up near the stairs. She began rebuilding the land and developing the country for the better. Lindsay has an adopted child and has taught a few students to defend Barovia in her stead. Kotaji returned to the Amber Temple, a sequel one-shot we plan to run soon. Strahd stays dead in our canon, and we kind of have a timeline going among our group now. Players are soon to meet Gildor's daughter, Thyrissia Leadbloom, in a campaign planned sometime next year. I miss my time in this campaign, and few moments rival the legendary ending that transpired with the odds against us. Hey everyone, Brian Von Vier here. If you liked today's video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and to ring that bell so you can see whenever we post or go live. Also, make sure to check out our main channel, Mr. Ripper, for all sorts of story threads that have tons and tons of laughs and tears as well. If you have a story you'd like to submit, please do so on r slash Mr. Ripper, and using a help action, come say hi to me, Brian Von Vier, over there on YouTube and Twitch. All the love, everybody. Please, please stay safe, and above all else, Thank you for letting us inspire you to join up with the many, many nerds who love D&D. All the love, everybody. See you next time.